Dominic Burgess. Um, I'd be the fifth generation to have the opportunity to run the Burgess Ranch. We're located between Jordan and Circle, almost exactly halfway. When I took over the farm, and I knew that we were eroding a lot of ground. A lot of ground was leaving on the field edges. I kind of got stuck with a big place to try and figure out what to, how to handle. We're trying to change a bunch of stuff. My great-granddad, he had four sons and two daughters, and they had 800 head of sheep when they moved through here, and then they bought cattle. The early 80s was when most of it was broke up, the farm. We run 800 animal units in cow-calf pairs. We'll leave them in here for three days, and then we'll move them up to the next pasture. We'll cut that pasture in half with a temporary fence. They recommend like 25,000 pounds of animal per acre for a short period of time. So we're trying to get there. It's a lot of fence to build. Most of the reservoirs in this country were built, you know, 50s and 60s, and they're well past their usefulness. They're mostly silted in or blowing out, so water is really the limiting factor in the area. The cows just hang in the creeks where they have water to drink, and the grass is usually well, but in the uplands, there's no reason for them to go up there because there's no water. We drilled a well at a little bit farther north here on top of a hill. So we're going to put a storage tank up there and then basically gravity feed everything on the south side of the ranch and then go up to most of his north stuff that he owns. We've probably got 25 or 30 miles of pipeline on the ranch now. So now by putting the water in the uplands, we can pull the cows up off the creek and get more vegetation to grow down there and actually utilize the stuff that's up here. Here's the well right here. So we're going to put a storage tank in. It's going to go from here just to the north, run through all these fields. 17, we had a drought. It was horrible. And we kind of woke up from there. So after that, we went in in 18 then, and we seeded 400 acres of our worst ground back to grass. The sage grouse grant was able to help with the grass seeding and the NRCS. Most of Garfield County is habitat, but this area happened to be in the core area, which is historically important to the sage grouse. By putting that cropland back to grass, it's gonna enlarge this sage grouse core area a little bit. So is a perfect fit for what he wanted to do and what the program is for. Basically it's for keeping sagebrush on the ground and grazing that'll enhance the sage grouse. We did quite a bit of work um, mapping and looking at the range and getting information for him to proceed with applying for that grant, which is helping considerably with the costs associated with the projects. We went in and seeded 2,100 acres and it exploded in 19. Everybody thinks, well, it's wasting our grass waste and space, it's taking moisture. Now the sagebrush is able to harbor the seed for the native grass, and the native grasses will start growing in where the wind's carrying them out, out of the sagebrush. We used to think we need to take and, and spray these sagebrush out to make things work. We went from kill, 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 spray everything to maybe there is a purpose of a lot of this stuff that we thought we needed to get rid of. This is probably our most unproductive farm ground that we had. The ground's really, really hard here. It's uh, hard clay soil. I don't even know if you'd call it clay or cement, maybe. It blows my mind what native grasses will do on marginal soils. We went from farming to a complete drought to the next year we, we planted the cover crops. It was quite an experience to graze cattle rather than run equipment across it. It wasn't primarily wheat farming. The wheat's generally a cool season grass, that's what it is. So by planting some warm season cover crop, a variety of different things in there, we've primed the soil to get more biology moving and just give them a little something to eat better before we plant another grass mix in there. So there'll be more uh, stomping and knocking all the old grass down, putting the grass on, getting more cover on the ground, which will help increase our organic matter and infiltration. Also help get the grass seeded down there, which is really what we're looking for. I never thought there would be a profit on the cover crop. But yeah, we were able to actually make some money on the, on the cover crop and set the ground up for what we were doing. And the NRCS is great. They see a lot of ranches, and we're obviously usually stuck looking at these cows where they're out looking at multiple places every year. They're a wealth of knowledge. It's always nice to see progress, you know. Things change for the better. You gotta take care of the land or it won't take care of you. I think we're making some really good headway for having two years under our belt. I believe it worked. <laughs> <laughs>